It's a beautiful day in Hudson Valley Park. And we keep the rain gods at bay. It's great to see all of you here. And a uh, special welcome to some that are here from a distance and from other parks. From Colombia. Parque del Guión. From Hungary. Right. Oh, yeah. And Mickey Buddha Park. Yes. There he is. Hey. What a walk. What an entrance. <laughs> the Philippines. Yay. And Banahao Park and also the park in in, uh, in France. La Belle Idée. La Belle Idée. Yes. And and from California and Red Bluff Park. All right. Yahoo. And a special warm welcome for all of you that are here for the first time. It's great. And Canadians. Well, we, we there's Canadians, but we consider. You know, this park serves all of the eastern part of North America, so Canadians are part of the family, right? Yes. No? Yes. Yes. yes, absolutely. We'll think about Americans. Huh? We'll think about it. And so are Americans. We have to tell them the We have to tell them. Right, that's right. Hey, all right. Okay. You want the short version or the long? All right, well, Slate will go with the short version. It's wonderful to have these kids here. This is great. This is what this park is all about, should be. Just remember how many there are to have the number loose. So in case, uh, <laughs> we know. Until they start shopping down the tree. Right, exactly. Well, today is a special day for us and for Hudson Valley Park. It's a day foremost to pay tribute to our dear friend and spiritual guide, Silo. I'm sure anyone who has tried will agree it's a formidable, formidable task to try to summarize the scope and meaning of his life. And I, I won't even try to go there. But I will say he, he began in the 1960s to study and explore with others the fundamental questions of human existence, the surpassing of mental suffering, which all the great messages and teachings have concerned themselves with, and to investigate and experiment around the best possibilities for the evolution of the human being in a time of accelerated crisis and change. Over the next four plus decades, CELO contributed a remarkable body of work, original and profound, always true to its origins, and which has inspired countless projects which aim to open the horizon of personal and social transformation, like the parks of study and reflection. This past September, 2010, Cielo died at the age of 72 in a peaceful transit to the light. After his body was cremated, it was decided to divide his ashes among the parks of study and reflection worldwide so that each park could do with them as they wish. Today we have planned several brief ceremonies in different parts of the park, first one here, so we can be together to pay tribute, give thanks, and mark this special moment. Certainly, these ceremonies are an important and deeply felt occasion for many of us for whom Silo is a guide, a teacher, and a friend. Through these ceremonies, we can place what is in our hearts and minds in the space of our park as well. 
But today is also an occasion to celebrate the 42nd anniversary of Silo's historic first public address called The Healing of Suffering, which was given in Punta de Vacas, Argentina on May 4th, 1969. We have an audio of that address along with other videos, which we'll have an opportunity to listen and watch and talk later this afternoon. And there's another reason to celebrate, which it was just about a year ago that we found this place, the property and house at 1170 Route 213, early, early May, and began to create Hudson Valley Park for study and reflection. It's been a wild ride and blood, sweat, and tears. Not to mention paint and sheetrock and dust and <laughs> coffee and sunsets and snow and ice and more snow and ice and fall leaves and, stuck, caught in the and the cars stuck in the mud. I'm sure you could. <laughs> ticks. ticks. Don't, you can't forget ticks, our friends. We've been entertained by our large friend Josh and a giant lawnmower buzzing across this lawn. Very much and goddesses dipping in the stream. <laughs> and the kamikaze uh, cardinal. The kamikaze cardinal, yes, absolutely. The mystery window banger. The mystery window banger. <laughs> and of course, at the end of every day, before we leave, hunting in our clothes and our bodies for tiny bugs, <laughs> eager for a free trip to the Big Apple. It's just part of the routine. We have many things we'd like to do here and make happen so that this park will be truly a special place for people throughout the area and those who visit. So if you're new or haven't, been, haven't seen the house or the surroundings recently, please take the time to, to check it all out. Aha. So, okay. <laughs> Briefly about the ceremony, so you know what's happening. After the ceremony of service from Silo's message will be a short reading and the placement of a small amount, a pinch, of the ashes in a hollowed out brick. The ashes will be sealed inside the brick, which will later be part of our future meditation hall, which will be right in this area, we, we think. This is a ceremony that a number of parks have done in different forms, both those with a sala or meditation hall and those with one planned. Following that, we will walk and cross the bridge and gather near the edge of the stream. There will be readings and some of the ashes will be spread on the water. This stream is a wonderful and integral part of our park and certainly evokes the sense of the current and path of life. Finally, a group, if I got this right now, a group will head from the stream to the top of the hill. This is a smaller group. And the rest of us will uh, come back and gather on the deck. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, we've discovered that our our hill is certainly subject to erosion, and so we're recommending that we limit the number of people on the hill at any one time. So our hill limit is how many? 20. 20, which we'll kind of self-select ourselves. Has anyone not paid their taxes here? We got everybody? Okay. So, all right. <laughs> We might have only a group. We might be just a very small group here. <laughs> right. Huh? So, um, and there at the top of the hill, uh, the rest of the ashes will be put on a stand. A stand. And there, those ashes to be carried by the the winds and the breezes 
and hopefully not on your salad later, but I think we'll be fine. Anyway, but at any other time or later, you're welcome to go to the top. It's a nice spot, a lovely spot with tree stumps placed in a circle that we dragged up there and that you're welcome to sit on. Nicholas gets first choice since he dragged up most of the stumps. <laughs> okay, enough for me. So, I would just like to say on behalf of the, the masters and friends of Hudson Valley Park, we extend our best wishes and offer this park as a space inspired by Cielo's great gift for you to feel at home to communicate openly and warmly with others, and to give value and meaning to new or the deepening of your experience and all that pertains to what is sacred and in common for the human being and has inspired the best of their thought and action. Great. So, the brown book on the table. For to here. Yes, there is a brown book on the table, the testimonial book. We'd love to have you sign. sign it. Say something if you like. Any other? Anything else? We're clean? Okay, so. We're going to do a ceremony that we call the, surfe the service, uh, where we attempt to. Um, to awaken what we call the first, the force, which is our inner, inner force, our um, vital force. And um, for those who haven't done it before, you simply follow, follow the reading and, uh, and try to go deep inside, uh, basically, okay? My mind is restless. My mind, My mind is, is restless. restless. My heart is troubled. My heart is troubled. My body is tense. My body is tense. I relax my body, my heart, and my mind. I'd like to invite you now to meditate on the following phrases from the inner look. You see those message. The chapter is called Evidence of Meaning. The real importance of an awakened life became evident to me. The real importance of eliminating internal contradictions convinced me. The real importance of mastering the force in order to achieve unity and continuity filled me with joyful meaning.
Completely relax your body and quiet your mind. Then imagine a transparent and luminous sphere that descends toward you until it comes to rest in your heart. Notice that the sphere begins to transform into an expanding sensation within your chest. The sensation of this fear expands from your heart toward the outside of your body at the same time that you deepen your breathing. You will feel new sensations in your hands and the rest of your body. You will perceive increasing undulations. Positive emotions and memories will arise. Allow the passage of the force to take place freely. This force gives energy to your body and your mind. Let the force, feel the force and its inner light. Try to see its light within your eyes and do not stop it from acting by itself. Feel the force and its inner light. Let it manifest freely.
with this force that we have received, let us concentrate our minds on the fulfillment of what we truly need. Ask for what you truly need. Peace, force, and joy. And for you and for you also. Also. Peace, Peace, force, and, and joy. joy. The mic, the mic. Yeah. The ceremony of death, it starts by saying that the body, the body of Tana, is not for the part, is not the person you remember, <laughs> much less so. Open it up. Yeah. Okay. Much less so these ashes. This is just a pinch of ash. But it can also become a luminous spark that can touch the deepest part of our hearts and from there irradiate like a resplendent force that nothing can detain. Peace in our hearts, light in our understanding. You can want to leave it here for now? Mm -hmm. Why not? There we go.
I don't see anyone up there yet. Okay. Can you hear me up there? Yeah, all right. Okay, so the idea is that we can all hear this. So it's going to be maybe a little bit loud for here. Oh, yeah. But hopefully, can you hear me up there? Yes? Two waves for yes and one way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they look ready? Yes. Yeah. They look yeah. ready. They look ready? Okay. This is a reading from the inner look. It's actually the, the very end of the inner look. When they spoke of a city of the gods, which the heroes of many peoples strove to reach. When they spoke of a paradise where gods and humankind lived together in transfigured original nature. When they spoke of falls and floods great internal truth was told. Later, the redeemers brought their messages and came to us in double nature to reestablish that lost unity for which we yearn. Then, to great inner truth was told. But when all this was spoken of, but set outside the mind, it was an error or a lie. However, the fusing of this inner look with the external world forces this look to travel new paths. The heroes of this age fly through regions previously unknown toward the stars. They fly outward from their world and without knowing it, they are impelled toward the internal and luminous center. 